Art has been a part of human history for millennia. Will AI be able to replicate the magic of a human touch on canvas? I'm Jeremiah Polachek, and today we're going to be examining the idea of whether or not artificial intelligence can replace traditional painting. Let's find out. Art serves as a universal means of human expression, transcending linguistic and cultural boundaries. Everybody, no matter where you're from, has a long history of people from that area making stuff. All this different stuff tells us about who we are and where we've been. Through art, people can communicate, inspire, provoke, and have a dialogue with the community that they're in. This is important for people to create their identities and create their place in the world and also foster an understanding of where they come from and their own history as well. There's a ton of different artists that could appeal to a lot of different people. It could be Frida Kahlo, for instance, making a portrait of herself with a spider monkey or something like this, detailing her own personal experience while also weaving in her cultural heritage. Or it could be someone like the cave painters who put their hands onto the wall and sprayed paint from their mouths, leaving traces of their presence behind to be found tens of thousands of years later. Regardless, all of these objects are things that link us directly to who we are as people, who we are and our history. That's what art is. When we're creating AI art, the first thing that happens is we work with some sort of algorithm or neural network. This algorithm or neural network is trained upon existing data sets of art. This could be all of the paintings Picasso ever painted, for instance. They create a certain data set and the algorithm or neural network looks at all these certain traits that are present within these paintings. Once it's trained, it then generates works of art that exhibit those same patterns and techniques that are existing in the data set that it's been trained on. AI is something that will only assist artists and evolve with artists over time. I'm not saying painting will conquer AI or AI will conquer painting. What I am saying is traditional painting is not going to go away. Traditional artworks are one-of-a-kind creation, each with their own inherent flaws and imperfections. There's a certain rarity and uniqueness that comes with owning a painting or a sculpture. There's an objectness about it. I was watching Anthony Bourdain the other day in his trip to the Congo, and while there, he met a king of a local tribe. And that king gave him this wooden bracelet that his grandfather gave him. Now, is this wooden bracelet something that is necessarily worth a lot of money? Is it something that aesthetically is the most beautiful thing in the world? Not necessarily. However, the story of that bracelet and the meaning of gifting it to somebody else is extremely important. That story is embedded within the object itself. Traditional paintings often feature physical nuances on the surface of the canvas. These can be things like brush strokes or textures or different imperfections even in the painting. AI art has a very difficult time replicating these same imperfections and textures. Not to mention the fact that they're on a screen generally. And if you were to print out these AI images, and you were to have these same textures able to be built up with some sort of new printer that can replicate these sort of things, you would still be lacking that human connection and the human labor involved in the creation of that painting. And the screen itself can be a medium and a place to explore uh, in entirely new forms of artwork. Somebody like Hutsani Miku, who is a hologram uh, pop star, people can form a personal connection and I think people will continue to form more intimate personal connections with all sorts of digital media in the future. From immersive technologies such as virtual reality to concerts with holograms. This is going to be something that is part of life going forward. But what I'm talking about is painting and whether or not this could ever actually replace 
painting. And the history of painting, the 30,000 years or 40,000 year history of painting itself, is that going to be knocked over by this new technology? No. And the reason why is people like to have stuff in their houses. And people like to go to museums and look at old stuff. It's part of humans, who humans are. If you remember a couple years ago when everybody was stuck at home, what was one thing a lot of people missed? They missed going to concerts, they missed going to museums, they missed being part of society and community with other people. That is important to hu who humans are and how we exist and how we experience the world. Paintings and artwork and sculptures and physical items are all a part of that history. We could all put on, you know, our Oculus and sit at home in the metaverse for a while, but at a certain point you're going to take that off and you're going to still be in your home and you can figure out do you want black cabinets or white cabinets or should you get this type of tile flooring or should you paint your walls green or brown or blue or whatever. We're still going to make choices and decisions based on who we are in the real world. And the history of painting has existed for so long already that it's not going to be knocked down or usurped by this new technology. And of course, I am a completely biased source of information because I make paintings, right? It's like, oh, the candlestick maker is against light bulbs or something like that. But bringing up candles is actually a good point. Why do we have candles around anymore? Why do we have these things? What's the point? We can just turn on a light bulb. Why do we have albums or records on vinyl? Why do people collect vinyl records anymore? What's the purpose? We can just listen to Spotify. Why even go to concerts when we can put on our headphones and hear the songs we want to hear and pause them when we want to go make toast? Why even bother going to a concert? All of these things are in line with the human experience and who we are and who, how we exist in this world. And painting is a part of that story. Paintings also serve a pretty practical function. You can put them on your walls, right? So you can have a painting of some ducks, which I like, nothing against that. Or you can have a painting of some dogs playing poker, also amazing. And this is nothing new either. We can go back 2.6 million years and early hominids were already creating tools from stone and wood. At a certain point, Homo sapiens would begin to put patterns on these tools. We'd also find the cave paintings about 40,000 years ago. Or that lion in Germany you can look up. Regardless, we've been expressing ourselves through objects for tens of thousands of years. So imagine the almost impossible argument being put out by people who think AI will somehow replace art. We're imagining this timeline that's 40,000 years long that goes through all these different cultures and all these different techniques and all this different history. Suddenly, AI just comes up and that's the end. That's, that's what it means to just make something is for it to be based on something else, to be based on a data set so it looks like something. And looking like something is dependent on somebody making that in the first place. How can you make something look cubist without people making cubist art? While AI will lead to the emergence of new fields and new inquiries and new collaborations with humans, AI will still need human input in order to create images and create objects and create stories. And it's going to do that. But at the end of the day, Humans are going to be writing those things. Humans are going to be creating the images that are based on the styles that are fed as the data sets for AI to generate images from. And it's going to be those artists that still have the power to change and move society into the future. I would even argue that in a time of endless reproduction and infinite amounts of images that can be created now, we have the ability to create an infinite amount of images. That physical images made by real artists could actually even become more valuable. And people could be even more, have more of a desire to have physical items in their homes. 
You know, I taught at a school where the majority of the classes are using different types of computer programs. And they'd come into my painting class or come into my drawing class and be relieved that they could finally work with physical mediums again. And this is nothing against digital mediums, but this is saying that humans are going to can maintain a connection to physical mediums because they have hands and feet and they can smear stuff around on a canvas and then they can put it on the wall and they can look like, hey, I made that. Or they can look at somebody else's and say, hey, I want that. Or they can look at one from a hundred years ago and think, hmm, that's an interesting, <laughs> you know, time capsule. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you like these sort of things, please make sure to like and subscribe. It's the only way I can make the channel. And I really appreciate all your help. Um, yeah, until next time, happy painting.